of the fire. In Coffey's first report, not in the public domain, the term to reference only allows him to recommend as to whether a new inquiry should be established. <coughs> and that's what his first report did recommend, but it's not in the public domain. <coughs> We've had the, the massage from Alcohol. The other thing I want to say is I'm also looking for the Minister to give us the, um, what he said, Minister Shatter said, what he has seen is not new evidence. I'm asking the Minister to give us a submission since he said that last week. Uh, even today, I emailed him, I'm still waiting to see. Well, at the end of the day, I want to hand you over to Antoinette Keegan now because this is no joke. I had a phone call from the tea shop at Kenny just before Christmas. And I explained like, that we have evidence and that we're going to start publishing it through the media. And we're going to start going with our tea days to emphasise and highlight all this in the government buildings. Because it's coming up to local elections and European elections. And this is our time and our opportunity. And the Kenny's reply to me was, I know he says you lost sisters, but you weren't the only one. The local families too. And put everything through the media. I pick it up through the media. And I advise you to go and see the solicitor. Seven minutes on the phone he spent. And he said, I have to go. I texted him and I've asked him for to give a submission by to us what your needs that they're asking for, the water for the basement. I've asked for the evidence that the fire was not in the roof space at all, the evidence from um, the storeroom above, the terms of reference for Mr. Coffee, that's the ones we have, says he can't wait to cause the fire. But this is what they're coming back into the dollar each time there's a question raised. Mr. Shatter said we can't. Uh, Mr. Coffey came back and said that the cause of the fire cannot be found, it will never be found, it will never be known. We didn't ask for that, we want justice. I hate to say we have no. asked for that. That could be published on the 14th of February. But if I was Antoinette and I lost two sisters and a friend, I, I, I didn't finish that. On Monday, I am going to put up Garden Station and I put the complaint in against. The tea shock and the Kenny. I put it in against the Minister for, for Justice, Alan Shatter, and uh, his private secretary, um, which is our, uh, Donna Sullivan, is in justice, Nick Reddy, and Sheila Willis for perverting the course of justice for my two sisters. That's why I'm doing on Monday. And I advise every other family to do the same. Uh, if I was asked, I would have asked the Minister, could we see? the drawing, which represented the geometry of the scene on the night these people died. The actual, real, true circumstances that they have, that we've yet to see in 10 years. Because our submissions have to okay. give them the proof. We now look for this proof. But I'll, but I'll ask you now, forget. Just go back there, to the people sent out looking for on current record, there is a map that's drawn. In 2004, having been threatened to be brought to the High Court by the state, isn't that right, Antoine? Yeah. yeah. At a meeting in the Department of Justice in March 2003, uh, Noel Sinners sat there with Sean Hope from the Department of Justice, and Sean Hope says, Now, we can bring Geraldine Foy into the High Court for defaming all these experts and their reports. And I said to Sean Hogan, go ahead, I look forward to it. I'd sit in the box and say, how are you, Your Honour? Now, why am I here? And your man looked at me. And I said, the reason why there's no reports into anything is because none of them have a conclusion drawn. An expert's report has to have a conclusion drawn, otherwise it's still discovery and a working document. And every one of them for this fire has no conclusion drawn. There is nothing to say, that was arson, that was an accident. Oh look, we have this information. What we have is, we have botched drawings that were echoed and regurgitated through everything that came out of the Department of Justice in the past 33 years, and since my report in 10 years, while coffee regurgitated the same crap. So I'm going to hand you over to Robin to tell you what happened. Uh, the same, what? 
I repeat that 85 pages long of a timeline where we have analysed each and every um, uh, tribunal uh, transcript of evidence. Uh, I have not finished it, and it will be finished probably for another two or three months. I'm still working on it on, on, a, on a daily basis. <clears throat> Mr. Shatter has failed to prove or uh, provide his proof that was what was presented by us was not the evidence, and that's <clears throat> um, what, what we are saying. He has failed to produce the proof. Uh, I wrote to him on the 30th of January a few days ago, and I explained why uh, we have placed the proof before you and the actions of yourself and your officers in the Department of Justice <coughs> have, and Dr. Sheila Willis of the Brennan Science Laboratory, have perverted the course of justice. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it you. It's quite a lengthy letter, but it, it, it precisely states uh, the points of view that we have raised umpteen times before. Uh, and it's been endorsed by uh, Geraldine, Antoinette, and all the other families that are, are involved with it at the moment. I've written also directly to Dr. Sheila Willis, who is the Forensic Science Laboratory Director, uh, and I have, uh, based on some information that came through in this last couple of weeks about a, a letter that she um, issued to the Department of Justice uh, on the 1st of August 06. And that letter on the 1st of August 06 was for the benefit of uh, the Gallagher Coffee Review. Uh, Dr. Sheila Willis was not involved in no, no, the... No, 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 no. They weren't set up yet. That was no. the Department of Justice. Oh, sorry, 2006, yes, yeah, pardon me, you correct it. 2006 with the Department of Justice. She did put a further letter uh, after that in 2008 for the, for the Gallagher Copy Review. The, the first letter, the 1st of August 06, was directed to the Department of Justice in response to Geraldine's report. But Dr. Sheila Willis, she was very woolly about her response. She re-quoted uh, Mr. Michael Norton, an officer in her department, uh, that, and that his evidence was basically the gospel, and she regurgitated some of the evidence that she found in the uh, Justice Keane Tribunal Report. Okay, can I put in? You can, yeah. Go I'm going to read out what Dr. Willis said in 2006 to um, the Department of Justice. She's referring to nothing but the truth. It's gone back to Sullivan. So I'll just read out just, just a little bit of this. She says, as requested in your recent your correspondence, please find below my views in relation to the above. The report from Mr. Gregg on Ain't Nothing But the Truth is extensive, very well argued, and includes a number of reports from various witnesses. However extensive as it is, it does not compare with the depth and breadth of the report of the Tribunal of Inquiry on the fire at the start was published by Robin King. Now, I would imagine that's biased, right? Nothing But the Truth claims to have new evidence not considered by the Tribunal. On my reading, it appears that the new evidence consists of the same points raised by the primetime programme represented in a more logical way. These points have already been addressed by a substantial report from this laboratory. The report, by the way, was a page and a half long, right? Uh, prepared in the main by Michael North. This is the same guy that couldn't get the pipe to burn because he told Kay the field's too far away from the jar, the 36 people of the field of pipe. Therefore, I will compare my comments on nothing but the truth to overall impression rather than address each point as it arises. Right? The report concludes by stating that the tribunal was deprived of crucial evidence, essential and fundamental to a proper discharge of its terms of reference. It goes on to comment on the rights underpinned by the cons Constitution and states that the state vindicates the life of a citizen by ensuring that all the natural deaths are fully and properly investigated. Any reader even a casual one of the tribunal report could not be impressed with the state's investigation into the deaths of 49 young people. By the way, how many people died again? 48. 48. 48. 48. 48. 48. And how many people in James report there? 48. I rest my case. She read right home. So, I think... Um, I'll carry on here. I, I, I have uh, also asked and uh, written to uh, Mr. Minister Shatter saying that we still await a <coughs> photograph of the fire water filled basement taken by the Garda photographer. Now, the Garda photographer, the photographs that we have seen, 
uh, all avoid uh, the cold room, all avoid the storeroom, all avoid any other storeroom that's in the building, avoid the kitchens, avoid all the other places where any food or combustible materials could have been stored. We have no record or photograph of the debris left behind uh, immediately uh, after the fire where we can sift through it, even on a photographic uh, point of view to see just what was there, uh, the volume of material was there. We know the fire brigade were there for more than two hours trying to put it out. Uh, I, I can't believe that you know the, the small amount of fuel that has been disclosed to the Justice Keane Tribunal uh, that you could put in a bit of a car would actually burn for two hours. Uh, it, it just does not make sense. Uh, <clears throat> also, all the letters that I wrote personally to uh, Dr. Sheila Wallace because she criticised my report and the technical content of my report. And I take uh, great patience with my reports, uh, with the precision of them, because that's my, that is my, my job. But she rubbished them, in effect. And it, it doesn't please me to have my uh, work rubbished. Uh, <clears throat> I've also published the, the letter here that, that Geraldine referred to. Uh, I've re published a letter that I've sent to Dr. Sheila Willis, and to which I've got no reply. Uh, I've published again, as well, uh, the letter that I sent to the government about uh, complaining about the actions of um, Dr. Willis. Uh, and um, I've asked her and I've asked the government to remove uh, her uh, record from the public record because uh, it's erroneous and it's, it's uh, condemning and it it supports the, the uh, arson theory, basically, that has already been discredited and that we've also proven that there are so many untruths uh, that she has backed up as well that are, are, that are certainly not correct. Uh, we talked about the glass wall, I think. I, I, I was going to mention the glass wall, I see. I uh, the wooden wall, she said. Mm. Yes, we have said uh, she also said that there was no... She said here, <laughs> this area here, you know, that when people were running by, they were there and they could not miss what see this fire in the roof space. And, you know, the first of all, they saw it. They couldn't miss it. It would have been run about. But the witnesses said that as they ran down this, it was all smoke out. And we know here that this this wall here is a solid wall. It's not a concrete wall. It's a wooden wall. It's a concrete wall. So how do you see it? It's a black wall, so high. So it, it, it would protect or shield anybody from the fire that was in the story. So she was trying to support the argument that there was no fire in the story at that level. And she also said that there was no ceiling in that uh, passageway, but it's quite clear from one of the, the guard's own photographs that there was a timber sheeted ceiling in certainly a part of it uh, adjoining the north house of, of the building itself. Uh, <coughs> the, she also supported the fact that there was a glass wall uh, when there was no glass wall. Uh, the glass wall was supposed to exist uh, between the North Alcove there and, and, and the, the lamp in the story. Sorry, the, the, I'll, just, I'll just point it here. Yeah. Now, in this area here, there's supposed to be a glass wall. Now, David Tucker was putting this fire into room space, but he had to stop because he was told it was a glass wall there, right? And if there's people out here dancing and there's a fire in there, He's not going to say 840 people. He's not going to say as an expert that that glass wall, and no one of the 840 people say they saw it before through the glass wall. But see, the problem is, we now know, we've gone back to David Tucker, and we handed this information over to the guards, and there is a perjury investigation going on at the moment. You know, we were told that last Tuesday. But the guards know who said there was a glass wall and who called on the other experts that there was a glass wall. So we quite, we went back to David Tucker and we said to David Tucker, you know the way you have notes there in your investigation the scene, would you tell us what was in the day? Right? Because from the coroner's records, there is only one female that has about that much glass, triangular shape from a drinking cup, lodged behind her ear. Nobody else has glass in. So if there was a glass wall here, you would expect from the kinetic expansion that the glass would be pushed in shards, right? It's kinetic movement. It's not like the airplanes have the slow cushion airs where they're held up. This just flies, <coughs> launches anywhere. The only one 
that said there was a glass wall was the framework cut art that we won't have. 